So are you, how would you describe yourself? Would you describe yourself as an, as an agnostic? Or? As an agnostic atheist. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. I would, I would say that I think the best starting point is to, is to reflect our own existence. To reflect about our own, our own existence. The reason why people lack of reflecting their own existence is because they chase materialism. You know what materialism means? Materialism meaning they're chasing after money, they're chasing after the, the things that are tangible, that are physical, right? They're too busy in focusing on materialism that they forget about their own existence. And the most powerful argument that's given in the Quran is in Surah Takathur, in, in a surah, it says, Al Hakum Takathur, that they are, you know, they are so involved in piling materialism, piling one above the other, Hatta Zultumul Maqabir, until they visit their own graves. You see, all of this materialism, it all comes to an end. That's the reason why atheism is a result of materialism. And therefore, people forget their own existence, they forget reflecting about their own existence. Look at your own human body. Your human body depicts that there must be a design and power. Your human body, you can see that there is a certain program that's following, a particular system is following. Your heart is pumping. If you allow me to call the human beings as machine, we're more complex than a simple phone like this. And you know this phone is a product of will, product of knowledge and product of power. Yeah? If we, if we were to talk about this phone, where do you think this phone came from? Manufactured, yeah, correct. Manufactured by someone who has the knowledge, correct? Yeah, because if he didn't possess the knowledge, how would he, how would he be able to, you know, create this phone in such a in such an intricate ways? Why does this phone need to have the will to bring this into existence? Because the phone does not reproduce and make other phones. Correct. The reason why this phone shows that whoever created this phone must have willed for this phone to exist because at one point this phone did not exist so you must have the intention correct so the, this this phone shows a product of will product of knowledge and product of power why because if if this phone if the creator did not have the power the ability this is only nothing but potential existence we know that this is not potential existence this is an actual existence do you agree with that and there's a purpose do you agree with that yeah so what about the universe what about human body which is far more complex than this phone. You're not even thinking the fact that your heart is pumping. Who is regulating all of this? The fact that you have a cut on your arm. If, you, if we were to drop this phone, what would happen to the phone? It breaks. Would the phone fix itself? So how would this phone be fixed? By who? By a technician. By technician, correct. So what about a simple cut? How, it managed, how does it manage to heal? So do you believe that the body has consciousness? Um, body has, well, yeah. How can the body have consciousness well, if it doesn't have the will? Whole, well, the nervous system goes throughout the whole body. No, that's program. That's program. program. Yeah. Everything is program for our human body to function. Why is it the fact that your why is it the fact that your heart is not stopping? Are you controlling your heart? So who is controlling? Who has put that program? For example, this phone. This phone, do you agree that this is program? It has algorithm. Uh, yeah. yeah, it must have encoded information. Sure. Can the information come by itself? So, um, has to be some cause. Ah, correct. Or originator. I don't like to... Updates every time. Updates every time, yeah? yeah? So what about our human body? Doesn't it show that it's program? Yeah, we have, well, we have the programming in the genetic code which we inherit from our ancestors. Ah, so the encoding. Could yeah. the encoding come by itself? Or does it, it require can. intelligence? Maybe it can evolve by itself. Okay, evolve doesn't really answer the question about our own existence. Because, it, because evolution, evolved by definition means a, a change of one state to another. But you're not addressing the origin. Right, well the code that, that makes it beating hearts. Yeah. That's going to be part of a wider system or a circulatory system. Okay, but can the system yeah. come by itself? If, look, look if think about this. A simpler version of itself. Okay, which is more complex, the phone or a human body? Human body. 
Okay, so the more complex, the more complex the design, the more there is a need for the creator. Okay. Is the creator complex? Is the creator complex? Yeah. The creator, now, okay, good question. The creator must possess with the will, the power, and the knowledge. Okay. And, what, and the creator's will is not like our will. The creator's knowledge is not like our knowledge. The creator's power is not like our power. Because the moment the creator possesses the, the identical power to us, or the identical knowledge to us, then the creator can never create this. Would you agree with that? So it must be unique. That creator must be unique from the universe. What does agnostic mean? Not sure, don't know. Ah, you mean not sure? Yeah. You mean not sure of? Not sure of what? Uh, not sure of um, mm. this was all on a sure. Of, uh, not sure of, of, a, of, a, of a creator. Yeah. Not sure of a creator. So, th and this is something called natural inclination, the fitrah. The natural inclination it, it is... Against, what, this goes against the fitrah. What you say, it goes against the fitrah. I know. So now let's give you the intellectual proofs. So you're not convinced by your own observation of your body, the observation of the universe that it shows power and design let's give you intellectual proofs Islam. give you intellectual proofs the quran gives a powerful argument we believe the quran is the last and final revelation from almighty god given to the last and final message of prophet muhammad peace be upon him there is a powerful argument in the quran which addresses people like yourself the quran mentions in chapter 52 verse 35 36 it says or were they created from nothing or were they themselves the creators? Or did they create the heavens and the earth? Surely they're uncertain. Now, you're not convinced. By looking at the observation, you're not convinced that there is the creator. I've given you all the evidences. It shows that you are nothing but a product of will, a product of knowledge, a product of power. There is a program in your heart, but you're not convinced that there has to be the creator. No problem. So I'm going to give you deductive reasoning. So I've given you the induction, inductive reason, meaning that from observation, we come to conclusion, you're not convinced. So now I'm going to give you intellectual proofs, meaning deductive reasoning, meaning the process of elimination. So whatever the premise is left has to be the truth. Do you agree with that? Good. So there could be four possible explanations for the existence of the universe. Either the universe came from nothing, the universe created itself, the universe was caused from something else that came before or the universe must require the creator who has the power the will and the knowledge to bring the universe into existence okay. so how did these four premise or you can give me another option First, what's the definition of universe in this context in this context the creation, so the creation the fact that there has to be explanation for our existence so this, would, would this concept of universe include god no god is the creator of the universe okay but what, okay. what I'm asking you is, what are the possible explanations for the existence of the universe? Either the universe comes from nothing, the universe created itself, the universe was created from something that came before, or the universe must require the creator that has the power, the will and the knowledge. Which of the four? Okay. Or you can give me another option. Fifth option, fifth option, in an eternal universe that is that is that what you believe right now um, no. so what do you believe um, well, not certain, but, um, subhanallah subhanallah look at the, the quran look at the quran those who don't accept that there's the creator what does what does allah say in the quran afterwards surely they're uncertain look at almighty god he reveals your psychological state if you don't accept there's the creator then you're uncertain Pretty certain? Yeah. Okay, are you one of them? No. Okay, so forget about them. Okay. So, you give me a possible explanation for the existence of the universe. Out of the, out of the, four, out of the five premises. Okay, uh, Let's go one at a time. On the whole, on the number three. Number three. Originated in something. In something that originated before? Yeah. Okay. Something that came Good, good. You see, this is a problem called infinite regress. How? Let me give an example. If I want to enter the reception in the building and I have infinite number of doors, so door one, door two, door three, door four, door five, ad infinitum, will you ever enter into the reception? No. You have an infinite amount of time. Yep. 
infinity, whatever, time plus one. I want you to ponder. If I have infinite number of doors in front of me, yeah. and my objective is to enter into the building, will I ever enter into the building? You have to go one door at a time? Okay, but there's infinite. Well, then you can't enter the building. Correct. So similarly, what you're equivocating is that if you're saying that there is an infinite causes of chain of the universe, is equivalent of saying that you will never exist in the first place. That the universe will not. So I said, well, let's rephrase it. So that requires an explanation. So what? So 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 anything that begins to exist, it must require an explanation. Okay, but do you believe? Okay, but your third premise postulates that this universe has a beginning because what? Because you've conceded that something else must have created this universe yeah. to come to existence. So anything that has a beginning, it must require an explanation for our existence. Because science, science is, yeah, science is, is all about explaining all the contingent entities. Maybe this is beyond science. I know this is beyond science. So this is why I'm asking you, that, so what we, what we are addressing is something called, you know, reasoning, sound intellect. So how does it address the question that the universe came to existence from your third premise? How does it address that? What difference does it make? Because you then have to explain to me, where did that previous cause come from? No, think about no, no, think, no, no, no. Your third premise is that, you, that the universe was created from something that came okay. before. Yeah. Right, so something that came before, where did that come from? Let's know, it has to go back to an original cause. I'm out, but, but are you really addressing the original course? Addressing it, I'm not. Think about it. Are you yeah. really addressing the original course? Because if you're saying that this universe came from something that came before, then that requires an explanation of where did this universe come from? Well, you can't go before the original course. Oh, sorry? You can't go before an original course. So why don't we go, so why don't, okay, but that's what we're addressing. We're addressing about the original, uh, I don't like to use the word cause but original uh, uh, um, explanation for this universe. Sure. Okay. Think about your genealogy. Think about your ancestry. Imagine you have an infinite uh, uh, ancestry. Okay. Do you believe that? No. Why not? Because uh, the whole understanding of the universe says that um, Life doesn't go back in. Sorry? Uh, biological life does not go back in. Why not? Why not? Uh, Why do you have a beginning? Me as an individual? Yeah. Before I was born, before yeah. I was conceived, I was there. So, did your parents have a beginning? Yeah. And your grandparents, did they have a beginning? Yes. So, you know what problem that, that so do you know what that, you know what that shows? That shows you that there has to be a, a, a stopping point. The fact that we are show, yeah. the fact that we, we, we depict beginning, there must be somebody that originated our existence in the first place. It has to be somebody. It has to be a person of course. Of course. Not, I don't like to use the word cause. But there has to be somebody. Look, remember this phone. This phone, what does it, what does it depict? It depicts a product of will, a product of knowledge, and a product of power. All of these three terms, do you know what they all show? Attributes, characteristics. So power itself cannot, cannot bring this form to existence unless there is a conscious being. So if you're telling me that the universe, this universe existed because something else caused this universe to exist in the first place, you have to then ask this, you then have to ask yourself this question, where did that previous use of the universe come from? And by the way, according to science, multiverse theory is a speculative, uh, it's, a spec it's a speculation. Do you have any alternative to speculation? Well, the only alternative you have is that there must be the creator. Is that a form of speculation? No, because I'm using deductive reason. So let's see. So now we've debunked that the fact... I, I'll tell you why. I, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I don't, I don't, I don't like to use the word first cause. The originator. Yeah, the originator. Yeah. The, the universe has an origin. It has a starting point. Why? 
because our own existence shows that we have a beginning. We're part of the universe. If the universe was existing, how could we never? How come we never existed forever? How come this tree right here, you know, this has a beginning? So if you believe that universe is eternal, why aren't we eternal? No, but the universe, by definition, is everything that we can see or we can touch and feel, correct? The natural world. Um, that's, okay. well, that's, that, that's, that's the definition of the universe. Okay. okay? So we're all part of the universe. So either yeah. the universe is eternal or the universe has a beginning. And everything that you see in the universe shows that everything has a beginning. This tree has a beginning. Our own existence has a beginning. The animals have a beginning. The plants have a beginning. So the logical explanation is that the universe must have a beginning. And if the universe has a beginning, then it requires an explanation. Okay, and your explanation is, well, the universe was caused by something that came before. That doesn't really address the question. It doesn't really address the question because it's called circular, it's circular argument, circular reasoning. Because then you have to ask yourself, where did that previous universe come from? So it, so it doesn't really make, make any difference. So ultimately, ultimately we have to come back to the question, what is the origin of the universe? Yeah, that's why I mentioned the uh, original cause, you know, that equation, so saying... But then you're giving, uh, but, but hang on, but you're giving me an answer, yeah. you're giving me an answer uh, that also has a starting point before. So um, you're not really addressing not the point. Necessarily, it could just be um, singularity or something that's timeless and spaceless. No, 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 no. No, but that, that, according to science, that is the cosmological model, correct? The Big Bang. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't particularly believe in the Big Bang, right? But according to science, they say that, you know, the universe has a bit. That's one thing I agree. The universe has a beginning. But I don't say that I believe in the Big Bang. Because it doesn't mention in, my, in, my, uh, in the Quran and the teachings of the Prophet, right? Okay. But the Quran says that he is the originator of the heavens and the earth. Yeah. Okay. So how does, how does you say that this universe existed by something that came before, how does that address the question of the starting point of this universe? Well, the question is, how does it? Look at it, look, 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 all of us, there's, there's four of us, there's five of us in this circle, right? So how is it the fact that if you're telling me where did you come from, you say you come from him. Where did he come from? Comes from him. Where did he come from? Comes from me. There has to be a starting point. Either way, sure. you can't escape. Okay. So it doesn't really address the question, ultimately, where did the origin of the universe come from? Well, you've got to have some sort of starting points. And Correct. Well, yeah, Correct. So That's what I'm saying. And you think you can deductively show that the starting point has to be... Correct. Good, good. So, creation. good. The universe, could it come by nothing? No. Good. So we agree with that. Could the universe create it itself? That's a contradiction. Now, we've already debunked the third premise that we just discussed about. We've debunked it. We've gone okay. back and forth. Wait, about hang, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Anything that has a beginning requires an explanation. Okay. Okay? So if you're telling me this universe came from something before, yeah. where did that something before come from? Maybe that something was beginningless. So you're attributed to the creator. That's what I'm saying. So, you're, so what you're doing is you're actually agreeing to our premise. That's exactly okay. the point. Because the universe itself cannot have the will. The universe itself cannot have the knowledge. The universe itself cannot have the power. It's like saying this phone, ah, this is a good out. It's like you're telling me this phone was caused by, by another phone. Does that logically make sense? If it's a powerful phone. So you're telling me this phone could come from another phone that caused this phone to exist? The phone could be attached to a 3D printer that can print out the phone. No, 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 no. But that, does that require intelligence? Um, as we understand phones, yes. Does that require knowledge? Yes. Does that require ability? Yes. That's the creator. So the universe cannot come from nothing, as we agree. The universe cannot create itself, we agree. The universe was caused for something that was created. Again, that doesn't really address the question. So what's the only logical premise that's left? The 
universe must have the, uh, the universe must require the creator who has the power, the will, and the knowledge to bring the universe into existence. And this creator is one and only, eternal, absolute, everlasting, independent, self-sufficient. He begets not noisy begotten, there is nothing like him. What do you think so far? Okay, but even if we go about option three, yeah. you still attach the the attribute of power and will and knowledge. That's really says the case. Okay, I addressed this before. Power itself. Yeah, please, man. Just clap it. The creator. Look. Let's look at. This. Let's have a look at this form before. Let's have a look at this form. Do you agree that this form must possess, or whoever uh, uh, originated this form must have the yeah. will, must have the must have the power, must have the knowledge? Okay, well, we know how phones are created, but we don't know how the universe is created. But hang on, but we're making inference. Which is more complex? I'm going to go back again. Which is more complex, the phone or the universe? Right, so if there's more complexity, there needs to be a creator. I mean, I'm giving it simple as a phone. And you and you see from your natural inclination, you don't even, you don't have to you don't you don't even have to see the manufacturer. You just know that it requires the creator. It requires intelligence. It requires knowledge. It requires will. It requires power. What about the universe? Where did the universe come from? And we've already addressed that. We use the deductive reasoning. No, not really. Because you've, you've actually agreed to us. You've actually agreed with our premise. Okay, you can characterize it that way. Yeah, because you, all you did is you just added attributes yeah. that we agree that it is the creator. We believe that the creator has the will, we believe that the creator has the power, and we believe that the creator has the knowledge. So this creator cannot just create us without any purpose. This phone here, right? Yeah. Can you say that this phone was created without any purpose? In some ways, uh, the purpose was to make money for the Okay, either way it's a purpose. Yeah. Correct? So you know the purpose of this phone is able to communicate, uh, able to use other apps, etc. right? So do you think the creator would just leave us alone without any guidance? Or do you think he will send guidance as to how we should lead our life? If we, if we, if we, have, a, if we have a creator, then yes. Correct. So, we believe that Almighty God, uh, by his wisdom, he sends prophets and messengers. Okay, he sends prophets. Yeah, he sends prophets and messengers, right? And the fact that the purpose of your life, the creator must give us a purpose. Do you agree with that? Like for example, yeah. So like for example, whoever created this phone must have created this phone with a purpose, yeah. So there's nothing, there's there's no such thing as purposeless. So the purpose of our existence is to worship the Creator. Why should we worship the Creator? We should worship the Creator. Why? Because the fact that He's given us all the blessings, all the food, He's given us food, He's given us drink, He's given us parents. Now, if I was to ask you this question, I'll give you two million pounds on the condition that you give me your two eyes. Do you ever do it? No. Why? Why? Can't replace them. Can't replace them. So you value your two million pounds. Uh, sorry, you value your two eyes more than two million pounds. So why don't you be grateful to the one who gave you two eyes? For free? For example. You give me this, yeah, let's say for example, I'm very thirsty. Give me this, give me the cup. Yeah. What do you expect me to say, at least? At least thanks. Thanks, gratefulness. Sure. Now, you give me the bottle again, give me the bottle, and I drink whatever I'm really thirsty, and I just walk off. It's a bit rude. It's a bit rude. So what about the bottle of water that's inside? Why are we be ungrateful to the creator? 
because our human instinct tells us that we should be grateful. Do you agree with that? So should we be grateful to the Creator? Yeah. So how do we express being faithful to the Creator by obeying Him, by obeying His commandments? For example, if you want to if you want to buy a gift for your mother, would you buy a gift based on what you love or based on what your mother loves? Why? Because you know what pleases her. Because, and that's why we should worship the Creator the way how He wants. Because the way how He wants is objective. The way how we think that we should worship God is subjective. Because, for example, if I want to, if I want to buy a gift of a, 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 a box of chocolates and there's peanuts, and I don't even know that my mom has an allergic, yeah, that that would harm, right? Yeah. So you must, you must, under, so you must know what the Creator wants for you. Just like the way how you would give a gift to your mom because you know what your mom loves and what your mom doesn't love, right? Okay. Okay. What so the creation. Hmm? What do you think of the Christian? Christianity. Christianity. Yeah. Forget about Christianity. Uh, right now. Hear what your objections are I know. Okay, Christianity. Yeah. What was your strongest? Case Good. First of all, the Christians, in terms of the concept of God, they yeah. believe in Trinity. Yeah. yeah. Are you familiar with Trinity? Yeah. What do they believe? Okay. But they still believe it's one God. Okay, so let's think of this. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. These three are not three, pers uh, three gods, but they're three persons, one God. Now, now, I want to ask you this question. If you have more than one person in the concept of God, doesn't that show polytheism? Doesn't that show you that hmm? there's only one God? So there has to be a person. It has to be one person. Okay, that becomes a family of God. You don't believe in one God. It becomes a Godhead, not one God. So meaning, for example, for example, Manchester United. I'm a Man United support, right? How many players do you need in football? Eleven. Right. So that's a team. Okay. But even within, even within Man United, you can't say one. You can't say one. You know, person. No, you say one team. Yeah. yeah, so that's not one God, is it? Okay, so if I was to ask you this question, so we've agreed that there has to be the Creator. That there has to be one Creator, why? Yeah, why, did, why should there be only one Creator? Because if there's more than one Creator, there will be conflict and chaos in the universe, there will be conflict of will. You cannot have more than one absolute being. They can be aligned the same way. So? They can be in agreement and they have the same will. Okay, so if they have agreement, that means they're not absolute. Because one has to compromise. So, for example, one one person in the in the Godhead says, like for example, the Father wants to say, I, I want I want sunny in Speaker's Corner, and then Jesus says, No, I want rain. Why they disagree? Right. But do you believe that? Okay. But by definition, God is independent. What does independent mean? Not dependent. Okay. Doesn't that show dependency? The fact that. Both the son and both the father has to compromise. And this is the reason why there's a powerful argument in the Quran. Which says, had there been gods besides Allah, each of them would have fight over the other. That's the reason why in Greek mythology, you know, they depict that, you know, gods are fighting each other. Right? Yeah, yeah. Pagan pantheons fight each other. Exactly. So, so, so that, that shows it's a weakness. In Christianity, that, that doesn't, that's not how it's depicted. Do uh, you know what? I agree with you. Their belief contradicts in the scripture. Because if you read in John chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus, peace be upon him, what does he say? He said, This is life eternal, that they may know you, the Father, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. If Jesus says that the only true God is the Father, can he also be God? If he's God too, yeah. If he is also God. But he says the only true God is the Father. The well, if I say the uh, what's your name again, sir? Um, you, you don't need to say it. I'll call you Mr. X. Okay. I'll say the only true person, uh, the only person in Speaker's Corner is Mr. X. Can be another Mr. X. The only true person. The only person in Speaker's Corner yeah. is Mr. X. Can there be another Mr. X? That's not true. So that makes Jesus a false god then. Because he said the only true God is the Father. So by default, anything apart from the Father is a false God. 
Jesus also says. Okay, but my question is, uh, oh, do you come from a Christian background? Is that why you're asking? Okay. Christianity, with all due respect, doesn't align with your natural inclination. It doesn't align with your natural instinct. Your natural inclination does not align with your sound intellect, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. If there is God, and we, we agree that there has to be God, there has to be the Creator, this Creator possesses, He must be all powerful. He must be self sufficient. What does self sufficient mean? Good, good. In the Bible, Jesus Christ, peace be upon Him, He says, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, Jesus, peace be upon Him, He says, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear a judge, and my judgment is just, for I seek not my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. So the question is, Jesus is showing submission to who? To God the Father. Does God submit to anything? Or is he the authority? So, exactly. So when we look at the criteria of God, so this is what we believe. I, I'm going to reiterate it. There is a small chapter in the Quran which goes through the Ikhlas. Which gives it the definition of Allah, the definition of God. Say he's Allah, one and unique. Meaning he's alone. Yeah? No one's with him. None is equal to him. None rivals to him. Nothing. Allah who Samad. Allah, the self-sufficient, the one whom everyone depends upon. Did Jesus depend upon the Father? So that means he doesn't he doesn't fit for the criteria of God. Even within the Godhead, even within the Godhead, Jesus yeah. must, Jesus does not meet the criteria of a true God. Only if you separate him from, from the same Trinity. Forget about separation or togetherness. Doesn't Jesus show, doesn't Jesus show that he's dependent upon the Father? Sure. So anything that, anything that shows dependency, that means he's excluded from being God. That's one of the criteria that both of us agree. That God is self-sufficient. That God doesn't depend. Yeah, I'll change my mind about that. Yeah. He begets not already begotten, meaning that God does not father children. He has no wife, no children. Nor was he begotten, meaning God was not born. He doesn't have a birthday. Does Jesus have a birthday? As a, as a man, yeah. Oh, he is a man. Right, so if you're saying, okay, so now you're talking about the the, the, the two natures that Jesus possessed according to Christianity, the divine nature, the human nature, correct? Okay, so from the divine nature, is the divine nature, does he require to eat? As a man, do we require to eat? I think so. Yeah, because if we don't eat, we're going to die. Okay, did Jesus used to eat and drink? Like, yeah. like us? Yeah. So, does that show that he's a human or he's God? This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives a powerful argument in the Quran for the Christian to ponder in chapter 5 verse 75 that look at the Messiah and his mother, they both used to eat. Look how clear we made the signs to them, yet they turn away. What does that show you? That shows you Jesus shows his humanity, doesn't show his divinity. Otherwise you have a paradox in nature because you're saying that God is self-sufficient, yeah. his divine side is self-sufficient, he doesn't need to eat to drink, but yet from his human nature, he requires to eat. Okay, you said paradox. Well, Christianity embraces paradoxes and mysteries. So does that align with your sound intellect? As long as it's not a contradiction. If I was to say square triangle. That's a contradiction. Why is that a contradiction? Because triangle means three sides. Right. So the moment it becomes four-sided, is that a triangle? No. What does it become? It's not a triangle. Quadrilateral. <laughs> okay, fine. Quadrilateral or square or rectangle, right? Whatever. Yeah, four-sided. Right. So similarly with Jesus, even if he possesses the divine nature, yeah. it shows his human nature as well. Yeah, so they contradict each other. Because the, from his divine side, he's supposed to be self-sufficient. He doesn't require to eat. Oh. But from his human nature, he requires to eat. So this is a contradiction. You can't have somebody who's self-sufficient and at the same time, he needs to eat to keep himself alive. Oh. So as a man, probably 33 years of his life, so you believe God has an age? Is that what you're saying? As a man, yeah. So, from our criteria, he's not everlasting eternal. True. Well, actually... Well, if you go by the Gregorian calendar, what do we go by? When we say 2022, what does it mean? 2000. 
22 years after the birth of Christ. Right, so you, believe God has a, so you believe God has a birthday? Um, he has a date of birth? In, in the date of birth as a man, yes. As a man? Yeah. So from his divine side, does he have a beginning? No. But he has a beginning as well, as a man. So how can you have a beginning and having no beginning at the same time? Remember, remember what's remember, remember what's one of the premise that we deducted that that the unit that the sorry so, sorry I, 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 look I want you look 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 uh, Mr X I don't know your your look yeah. I want you to imagine this Jesus two thousand years ago first century in Palestine yeah. walking around in Jerusalem yeah. and he's a man he eats he drinks yeah. he does miracles. And, okay miracles by by his own will or by the God's permission or by the Father's permission? He has permission, that means he has the power to do it. No, not really. Not really. Because if God is if God gives you the power, does that mean does that mean you're God? Well, power and permission, that's not the same thing. No, no. Okay, permission. So does God require permission? Or can he do what he wills? He does what he wants. Right. So Jesus, peace be upon him. And if you look at all the other previous prophets in the in the Old Testament, they all perform miracles. By the Father's permission. When, if you read in John chapter, I mean John chapter eight or John chapter nine, are you familiar with the story of Lazarus bringing the uh, uh, Jesus bringing Lazarus from the dead? Are you familiar with that story? Do you remember uh, what did Jesus request? Um, I, I don't remember the details. Okay, so Jesus, he prays to the Father, that Father, I, th I think that you always hear me. I know that you always hear me. So when Jesus prayed to the Father, prayer signifies that you're in need. So are you saying that God is in need? That's Jesus as a man. No, but, no, but Christians also believe Jesus is God. He's fully man and fully God at the same time. Right. So if he is fully God, why does he need to require permission from the Father? Why does he need to pray to the Father? So if he's acting as a man, yeah. right, if he's acting as a man, why couldn't he do it from his own will? Why does he have to ask the father? Um, are you actually a Christian? No. Well, are you sure? I'm on the fence. So you're more, you're more, you're more inclined towards Christianity? Yeah. Out of all the religions? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Have you read the Bible? Parts of it. Parts of it. I've read the whole Bible. Yeah? Because, I, because I, I came from a Christian school system from primary school to secondary school and I was compelled to read the Bible. I read it from back to cover. And there's not a single statement, not a single statement where Jesus ever preached Trinity. What did Jesus preach? He preached the oneness of God. Exactly what Moses came with. If you read in Mark chapter 12 verse 29, a, 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 a scribe approached Jesus and asked him, that which of the greatest of the commandments? Jesus responded by saying that the greatest commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the, and the second commandment is this, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Did Jesus, did he confirm the teaching that Moses came with? Because if you're reading, right, so in, so in Judaism, there's something called Shema. Shema is the essence of the oneness of God that Jews testify every day. If you're reading Deuteronomy chapter six, verse four, it says, Shama Israelo, Hero Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. Doesn't that sound familiar what Jesus said? Yeah, right. So, did Moses believe in Trinity? No. Oh dear, came later. Right. So, when Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, is he affirming Trinity or is he affirming the oneness of God? There's also a quote in, in John. So in, in Mark chapter 12 verse 29, Jesus was asked, he was asked by a scribe that what is the greatest commandment? And yeah. Jesus responded, Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. So he's quoting exactly the same passage that Moses came with in the book of, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. So if Jesus is confirming, if Jesus is confirming the message that Moses came with, how can Moses did not believe in Trinity? So you, oh, right, right, right. So you believe that God's nature changes? No, 
So all of a sudden, for 2,000 years, for 3,000 years, all the, Jew, all the Old Testament Jewish prophets, they, they preach the oneness of God, and all of a sudden, a man called Jesus preaches Trinity. Why would why, why, why would why would the concept why would the concept of God change over time? Why? No, but if God is always three in one, then why was there no affirmation in the Old Testament? Do you believe the Trinity is eternal? Yeah, no, be in, no there's some indication. I've seen some some stuff that indicates some things in the Old Testament could indicate. Um, Give me one verse. Um, one verse. Oh, I'll give you a verse. I can refer to a story. Go on. When um, uh, Abraham I know. sees God yeah. as three persons. Or three angels. Three, um, three men. And uh, yeah. so understanding that um, okay. he refers to them as God. Okay. Singular. So are you, say, are, you saying that, are you saying the Holy Spirit is a man? Come on. Does it say right? So in that story of Abraham, does it ever say that these three men are one? That's Trinity. That is the Trinity. The Trinity is not that the, that the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. These three. No, they don't stop there. They say these are three persons, but one God. So where is that part? Show me. I've read the Old Testament. I've read the New Testament. I've read from front to cover. I can't. I can't find. Um, I can't find one. Do you come here often? I'll come here often. Okay. Well, maybe next week I'll be able to. Yeah? Okay. I'll give you one message. Okay. We believe in nearly all of the Old Testament prophets. We affirm Adam. Nearly all of them. We affirm Noah. We affirm yeah. Abraham. We believe in uh, Jesus. We believe Jesus was not God or he was the son of God. We believe okay. Jesus was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously, without any male intervention. We believe Jesus was born miraculously. We believe in the Blessed Mary, that she was one of the greatest women to ever walk on the face of this earth. We believe that he used to perform miracles by God's permission. Okay? I believe in nearly all of the Old Testament prophets that is confirmed in our religion. So for example, I believe in Adam, I believe in Noah, I believe in Abraham. All the prophets, all the prophets and messengers, they came with one message, to worship the one true God and not to associate partners with him. That is the one message that all the prophets came with. That message never changed over time. Because why? Because the nature of God doesn't change. Is God absolute? I don't understand that term. Okay, absolute meaning no change. Relative meaning change. So you believe God is absolute? God never changes. God never changes. So why was the Trinity, why at one point there was no Trinity? Concept of the Trinity came at a certain point in Christian history because before then, why did none of the, all the facts weren't in? Why did none of the Jewish prophets? Not, why did none of the Jewish prophets ever affirm the Trinity? Do you know what they affirm? The oneness of God. In the Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, yeah. verse 39, it says, "There is no God besides Me." 